In today's tutorial, I'll guide you through a method for creating an ad hoc report using REST API, allowing easy data refresh using a one-time identifier. If you've been following my previous videos on Power BI REST API, you're likely aware that you can experiment with functionalities and features on Microsoft Learn or even import the data directly to Power Query. However, with the API, it is essential to identify yourself somehow to extract the data, which is done in Microsoft Learn by a token that's valid for a limited time. But what if you only need to generate a report from the REST API on an ad hoc basis? In other words, what if you don't need to worry about frequent data refreshes? That's exactly what we are going to delve into today, leveraging some nifty Power Query parameters. Let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. There are reports that don't require constant refreshing, only updates when it's requested. For instance, a report detailing workspace users and their access rights. This is exactly what I would like to show you today. To accomplish this, we don't have to rely on our friends at the IT department for assistance. By utilizing some clever techniques within Power Query, we can set up a parameter to input an identity token from Microsoft Learn whenever we need to refresh this particular extract. Let's head over to my PC so I can demo how to do this. We start by heading to the REST API documentation page and navigating to the Groups, Get Group Users section. It's worth noting that in REST API terminology, workspaces are referred to as groups. Once there, we will hit the trusty Try It button. Following a quick login, we can input the workspace ID from Power BI. It's this particular segment in the URL. I click on Run and voila, we are greeted with a response. However, the response we receive is limited to this website and it's not presented in the most user-friendly manner. It's in JSON format. So our next step is to bring this data into Power BI Desktop using the magic of Power Query. Now in Power BI, let's click on Get Data and go with the web data source. Choose the advanced option and paste in the request URL from Microsoft Learn. Under the header parameter option, type in authorization. Next, simply copy the lengthy text with bearer at the beginning from the Learn website into Power Query. Just like that. Hit OK and voila! Our data now resides in a table format within Power Query. Within this data, we can find the email addresses, names, and the type of access each user has to the workspace. Once we load this into Power BI, we can even create a summary table for easy reference. It's that straightforward. Today, we are focusing on the crucial step of obtaining valuable data to report on. The data with magic can come later. Cool, that part is wrapped up. However, as I highlighted in an earlier video, our access to the information from the API hinges on that bearer token. The catch is that this token has a rather short lifespan. So what's the solution? You could technically run through this entire data acquisition and report creation process every time you need to report on users, but let's face it, that's far from optimal. Alternatively, we can be smart about it. We will create a parameter right inside Power Query. From then on, the only thing you will need to worry about when refreshing this report is updating the token from MS Learn. Start by creating a parameter and let's call it bearer token. When creating this parameter, ensure it's set as a text type. This will make it a breeze to switch out on Power BI service once the report goes live. Now, let's go back to our user's query. In the advanced editor, it's time to swap up that lengthy text with the parameter we just created. This will streamline the process and keep our report refresh hassle-free. And just like that, whenever it's time to refresh this ad hoc user's report, we can effortlessly swap out the token with the new one from Microsoft Learn. Next, let's go ahead and publish the report to the workspace. After that, all that's left is to add a new user to the workspace. Let's go with Bill, giving him contributor access. Now, I'm going to grab a coffee and wait for the token to expire, instead of making you wait here with me. Let me work some video editing magic. 
Ta-da! After my coffee break, we can head back to Microsoft Learn, refresh the page, and generate a new token. With that fresh token in hand, let's make our way over to Power BI service. Under the dataset settings, we will replace the old token with the shiny new one. Hit apply, return to the dataset, and give it a refresh. If we followed all the steps correctly, Bill's name should now be displayed in the report. Let's take a look. Great stuff, everything appears to be working like a charm. Alrighty, today we really brought together some of the skills we previously learned. We use Microsoft Learn to create a connection between Power Query and Power BI service via REST API. Through this connection, we query the list of users, complete with their permission levels for a workspace or group. Within Power Query, we set up a parameter to streamline the process of replacing expired tokens. Then, we took it a step further and refreshed the published report with a freshly created API token. How good is that? That's a streamlined approach. As I pointed out earlier, not every report requires constant updates. Some can be viewed as an audit step, only needing attention once a quarter or even less frequently. For this purpose, we can skip the step of creating or relying on our IT friends to create an Azure app which would otherwise be necessary for a full-scale REST API communication setup. This streamlined approach saves us time and resources while still delivering valuable insights. Even though we found a workaround for ad hoc reports, it's still valuable to learn how to create a more robust solution. Make sure to catch the next video where I walk you through automating token generation. This will help us overcome the limitations of the Microsoft Learn token setup. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to address them as quickly as possible. As you say till the end, I'm sure you find value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.